All right, test fit has three parking algorithms. Structured rectangle, which is this kind of garage. Structured fill, garage that fills the entire container that it's in. And then surface. Surface divides up a larger block into smaller pieces. <clears throat> or if you don't have any building at all, it simply just solves a giant sea of parking. For this tutorial, we're going to focus on structured rectangles. Structured rectangles are typically used in wrap buildings. The benefit of having a structured rectangle is that oftentimes these are prefabricated. And if you want to be more precise about what your dimensions are, this will be a great rectangle, a great garage for you. Um, first thing, define location. So in parking, Make sure you have structured rectangle turned on. I'm going to define my location. Tesla will automatically place a garage, but oftentimes uh, it's in a bad spot. So when I click define location and I hover over the site, you can see we have a rectangle and we have arrows. The arrows are helpful because TestFit will try to grow a garage in order to achieve a specific parking ratio. And those, ar those arrows are showing you where it's going to grow. These guidelines are helpful because when I'm at this guideline right here, a full single loaded corridor can go around my garage um, below it. So that's this area right here. Um, I'm gonna left click to place it. And let's do that again. Click define, hover, left click to place, define, hover, and you might say, well, I want to rotate it. Over here is a button for rotate. So now orientation is in the other direction. A shortcut here is you can right click to rotate. And I'm going to place it here. Great. <clears throat> so we have another feature here called tray count. Tray count has to do with the number of trays. So in test fit, we consider this double loaded uh, line of parking one tray, and this this double loaded line is a second tray. If I add a third tray, it'll solve with a third tray. Go back down to two trays, define, rotate, place it, go to three trays. <clears throat> so you can see how that works. We have a minimum length. Um, this is to save people from themselves. Typically, uh, 171 feet is kind of the minimum that you can do a garage with. Um, and then we have a padding parameter. So I'll scroll in. Padding is simply an extra amount of space between the edge of the garage and the outside. So if I increase this, you can see that extra space. We also control levels of garage uh, using a uh, parameter. So right now on this wrap site, we have six levels above grade and zero levels below grade. So let's say I have a 1.42 ratio and I need more parking. I can add a level to find my spot. <clears throat> and then now we have more parking. Um, you can add levels above grade or below grade. Below grade is typically more expensive. Go down to six. You can add a level below grade. And then in our elevator buttons, we go down to the B1. You can see the B1. Install width and stall depth should be pretty self-explanatory. Um, max run has to do with really surface parking, but... It's included in here. Let's say you have you can only have a max run of uh, 90 feet. You type in 90. And then we have a stall taken out every so often. So if you want to be conservative and include some more carb out areas in your garage, this is a great way to do it. Uh, drive aisle width, pretty self-explanatory. That's this dimension from here to here. It's set to 24 feet by default. You can change this number 
make it shorter. Um, you can see our garage front footprint has shrunk. And I'll flex that parameter again. You can see it getting larger. You can see it getting smaller. Uh, we also ramp automatically. Um, so in order to get a more accurate picture of how efficient this garage is, adding the ramp in is helpful because on the top floor, you're going to have a missing slot where it says open and below. <clears throat> if you don't want to model it with a ramp, you can turn it off. And if you want to be more conservative with your ramp slope, you can do that as well. 6.66% is the maximum slope that you can park on a ramp in the United States. Um, you can set this to six and you can see how the ramp gets larger. You can make it even, even shallower. I don't recommend that though. Set it to 6.66. So that is the structured rectangle garage.